Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Reader review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're proud to review a very new device that just hit the market. It's the Icarus Excel. This is a 9.7 inch e-ink pearl display. Resolution is 1200 by 825 and it's running a Freescale 800 megahertz CPU processor. Incidentally, Freescale processors are uh, shown and very evident in uh, Kindles, Nooks, and Kobo e-ink readers. Also, you notice that this is in landscape mode. It does go in 360 degree orientations, but for the sake of our video, um, most of the time landscape readers come across better on camera. It has speakers, it has a two week to four week battery life, it has Wi Fi, and it reads a myriad of ebook formats. Peter here is going to give you the full 360. All right, looking at it, you immediately know that none of the really nine inch readers look like this. So I think it's really cool. Um, they have nice rubber buttons here. So there's the home, back, page turn left, page turn forward, or back, back uh, left and right, or back and forward. You have a control stick, which we've seen on the uh, Kindle DX so you can navigate with that and it works uh, landscape and portrait nothing going on on the sides all the funs happening at the bottom here so what we have here is volume up and volume down you have a 3.5 mil headphone jack microphone power button mini USB full SD Kind of a weird layout with the USB and the SD, but um, you know it's about the reader, not about the ports it has. Speaker. We thought this was well. I thought this was some sort of fingerprint reader because I've have a lot of Fujitsu devices here, and uh, this looked quite like that. But it is indeed a speaker. It's just designed very creatively. Hard reset button in between the certification and the don't throw away uh, laser. You interact with this device primarily with a stylus. You can't interact with it via your hands at all. So you don't want to lose this stylus that comes for free with the unit. 9.7 inch e-readers, one thing that they do better than any other e-reader on the market is handle PDF files. And this e-reader has tremendous PDF support. We're going to load up a newspaper. It's a standard newspaper that we test all of our devices on. It's a fairly good benchmark. Um, we can see things on how, how quickly it loads and some of the features uh, that allows us uh, to implement. You can see here that we have a number of notes and little scribbles that are accomplished with uh, the stylus. Peter here is going to demonstrate how you do all of this and how you could augment the PDF experience. All right, so you see here standard PDF. Um, a lot of readers don't allow you to really do anything with it, but what does this one allow you to do? Well, let's find out. You can do a lot of font options, and I mean a lot. Uh, aside from Amazon and Pocketbook with the standard four to eight different font options, you have 17 here. So you can really choose any font you wish. And what it does is not only zooms it in, it reflows it for you. Titles everything properly and just it reflows it almost flawlessly. So you can see here, let's go to the next page and all that. So there you go. Those were our notes, and you can see it titles it properly. So, but for the sake of the um, the annotations we're about to do, we'll have it in 100%, which is the optimized view. Now, what if you wanted to tell someone this is a very useful uh, article here? So you want to press the home button, which doubles as a more button, and you want to go to annotations. What you can do is actually sketch. So you can say. This, I want you to really, you know, this is the one I want you to look at. This one. Very responsive writing. Very, it doesn't catch up with you. No matter what you write, it's going to follow along flawlessly. Uh, another thing you can do is actually say add annotation and grab some of the text. And what else you can do with that is you can note it and then you can export it. And what happens is that all of the text you highlighted goes into a folder set that is called reading notes. You can then read the world PDF 
which is our newspaper that we were looking at and you can see all of the articles we were all of the articles we were uh, capturing so these are all our highlights so, and, uh, they're, and they're exportable now not only is this saved into your device but it actually saves it as a physical text file on your e-reader so this means that if you are a student if you're um, making notes and you need these notes to be exported you can simply copy and paste these uh, text files to your PC to your laptop to your tablet and whatnot this is one of the only tablets we've ever seen that allow you to do that now you may think that's a cool feature but we were actually blown away on what we can do next in terms of drawing and uh, doing things with that exactly say you wanted to save all of this now and let someone know when you transfer them this world newspaper that this is the most important thing they need to look at what you want to do is go to annotations and you want to export annotations crap that's not what you want to do hold on I know you want you want to go to merge hold on exactly so what you want to do is that if you want to show someone when you send them this world newspaper that you want to keep all your highlights what you do is go to the more button annotations and merge sketch right there so what this is gonna do it's gonna capture all your sketches it's gonna load and what this does is that it actually makes a duplicate on September 30th 2012 of your file with all your sketches pre-built in. You can think of it as cloning the exact PDF document with your notes. So you could have one PDF file, which is um, your textbook, which is your course study material, and then your second one could be the one with all of your notes. So you're not just capturing, say, the singular page with all your notes. You're actually capturing the entire document. So Peter here is on page two or three. We can jump to page five, add notes, page 10, add notes. And when we export it it's exporting the entire document so this is perfect for students because not only will you allow yourself to zoom in and find that sweet spot in uh, we're reading a newspaper it's two columns I'm sure if we experimented we can find the perfect option to, to, to view it and uh, different PDF documents require different zooming levels but the very fact that you could export this PDF with all of your notes highlights um, your drawings and everything else I've never seen it in another e-reader before and this like completely like makes me love this right off the bat because Kindle DX, Pocketbook 912, uh, Onyx Books, none of them even come close to the versatility this allows you to do. I would agree. I mean the Kindle DX, it being the only mainstream 9.7 inch e-reader, you couldn't even navigate with the thing other than with the control stick. So this really gives you the world at your fingertips as to what you can do with it. The possibilities are virtually endless with the sketch and exporting of the annotation options. Okay, so we've looked at uh, a PDF file. Let's check out Night Road by Kristen Hanna. It's an EPUB book. This reads, this device reads a lot of different uh, formats. You can do everything from PDF, to EPUB, RTF, text, PRC, which is a very Kindle friendly format. Uh, you see here that it's uh, two columns, uh, but you can customize the view. If you read it in, in portrait mode, you actually ditch this all together. So you do have some uh, options to make it flow very well. Page turn speeds, how do they feel? For it to wipe away and redisplay an entire almost 10 inch field of text, I think it's very, very quick. And we've seen that they have um, every fifth page it blacks out. So there's actually an option that we'll show you real quick and then we'll get back to the e-reading experience. There's actually an option that you can go to screen update something we've never seen again in e-readers you can set it to never so it'll never have that black refresh on your re on your ebooks or 
pretty much any of your written material you're going through. Yeah, some e-readers allow you to set it to like every three and six pages is like the maximum. This goes to like seven and eight pages and I kind of like it. I mean, getting rid of that screen flickering is, is something that I know a lot of people always ask us about. Now, I know that there's a very there's a lot of similarities in the way that you can configure your fonts that are much akin to Kobo and Amazon devices while you're reading books. Why don't you show us that? So we have all the font options, once again, 17 different font options, which is just, you know, you can do so much with that. And once again, be it a PDF or an EPUB, we can do our, anno our annotations. So we can go and add this field of text if we want. Note that. And once again, it'll save this to our reading notes. Kristen Hanna text file. You can export this, send it to your friends, you know, uh, if this is the, uh, maybe for a class assignment you say, oh, these are the two I want you to uh, work on or just whatever the case may be, you can do that with this Icarus Excel. So that about wraps up the reading experience, which is uh, very comprehensive. EPUBs don't really have a ton of options in terms of being able to change your fonts and things like that, but I think the the PDF support far outweighs any of the shortcomings uh, of the EPUB experience. This is incidentally Adobe DRM compliant, so you can actually hook this up to your computer, make purchases from Barnes & Noble, Kobo, any store that sells EPUB books, and sync them to your device via Adobe Digital Editions. What I want to show you next is the music player. This does have a speaker, as Peter pointed out on the back, so you could listen to music and read at the same time. It does have the multitask support, so while you're exiting the music player, it could actually still be playing. So we're just going to play a quick tune and give you a sense of what the music player is like and show you everything about that. All right, so all you have to do is find it in uh, your file explorer. It's just kind of your internal storage. It's kind of like browsing your computer and your drive. Um, when you plug this into your computer, there aren't any directories like music, books, pictures. There's no directories. There's just a blank root folder, so to speak. So you just dump everything into the root folder. You can see we have MP3s, EPUBs, and PDFs in the same folder. It's uh, it's pretty it's pretty good with playing things right off what you click so let's just listen to the audio uh, quality for a sec Speaker, so, speaker quality is fairly good. I mean, it's on the back, but when we just tilted it up a little bit, you really heard it. And even with it face down or with the back down, you didn't hear. Uh, it, it wasn't too bad. So let's uh, exit out of here. And this does play games. Uh, you do have a few default ones that are located there. Nothing really too exciting. Uh, but you do have a little bit of something something. One of the things uh, that I like is that it does have an internet browser. Now in the settings menu there's no Wi-Fi configuration utility. Once you open up the web browser and you can see there's a number of settings here. Everything's pretty self-explanatory. does have a lot of language support options, uh, default fonts. You can customize what boot image you have or when you go into standby mode, you can put a picture or something like that. You know, time zones. Um, nothing really tremendously too complicated, but I'm glad that it does give you some versatility um, in, in those options. But once you load up uh, the web browser, if you don't have Wi-Fi already configured, it'll give you some prompts. It'll say, what Wi-Fi network do you want to, to tap into? You can enter passwords if it's uh, protected or not. And then you have Wikipedia, Google, and uh, the main option here. So we have just Wikipedia. As you can see, it loaded up fairly fast. Um, when you click on links, things tend to load up pretty quickly. The internet experience on this, to be honest, is not 
tremendously amazing. When we initially were doing Google searches, it took about like five minutes for a page to load. But as you can see, Wikipedia, which is mainly text-based, loaded super quick. You do see, see some refreshing issues. I'm just very happy that this does have a web browser and it does have Wi-Fi because, um, you know, the Kindle DX doesn't have Wi-Fi, it just has the 3G. And I would say that this versus the Kindle DX, I would definitely get this over the DX. Uh, for one, Amazon has not released any DX firmware updates in, it seems as though in about a year to about a year and a half. This, on the other hand, just the PDF support absolutely destroys all of the competition. So I would recommend this. If you're looking for a 9.7 inch e-reader, you can't really get much better than Ercurus Excel. And I would rate this a must buy if you want an e-ink device to read PDFs either for school or for pleasure. It also gives you a lot of ebook support, a lot of different formats. Uh, the price is right. Uh, it's about roughly about four hundred dollars to about four fifty to four sixty. It's quite a broad spectrum based on where you buy it and currency conversion because the prices from uh, the distributor are euros. However, you can get these from shoppyreaders.com and they will ship further than just Europe. They will ship internationally so uh, the prices will be in US slash Canadian dollars. So it does vary depending on what vendor you use. Yeah, so if uh, we really like this, so this is going to be made available on shoppyreaders.com so you could start placing your orders pretty well immediately and I really like this. I mean one, uh, you know, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. We want to hear your opinions and thoughts. What do you think about uh, this Excel e-reader? Please leave a comment on our YouTube channel at youtube.com/goodyreader, and you could read our full hands-on review of this, as well as pictures and a ton of uh, other information that really didn't make this video uh, review. So check it out at goodyreader.com. And for Goody Reader, my name is Michael. This is Peter. And everybody, take care.